Okay, welcome back everybody. I have turned up the volume a little bit just so that um, I don't come off soft uh, in sound. Um, I had somebody comment on one of my earlier videos that the sound was a little bit light, so I apologize for that. So hopefully this will rectify that. Um, if not, someone else please comment and we'll go from there. So what's this video about? Well, we're going to continue on with the Steel Scent Saga because, well, I've got a bunch of them in front of me at the moment and I just kind of want to do it. Let's take a quick peek here. The coin in front of you is a 43D. It is a original mint state coin um, that is uh, a nice coin. You can obviously tell it's mint state based on what I've told you in the last couple of videos which uh, is uh, you know, basically that winged look, that those little angel wings that uh, travel around the coin, known as the cartwheel of the coin. Um, but this time we're gonna compare this particular coin to a altered 1943S that is one of the hardest um, reprocessed or altered coins to pick up on. And it's this little guy right here. Well, here we go. Everything about this coin looks spot on. I mean, it's got a nice color to it and unlike the buffed one, it's actually pretty similar in color. And if you look at it, you look at it and you say, gosh, you know, it, it just looks like it might be hazed compared to, you know, a normal coin. All right, that may be the case, except what's different about this coin, I'm gonna turn my light down, uh, is that this coin has been acid dipped. So what is acid dipping? Simple, it's just that. Um, there are cleaners out there on the market. There are um, light acids out there on the market. I'm not going to name them because I don't want people doing this at home. Um, and if you really want to know, by all means, send me a message. I'll be happy to tell you, you know, what it is. But this coin has been acid dipped. And what the acid dipping does is it removes the zinc coating, the 0 0.001 micro thin zinc coating that the mint put on the steel scents before they were minted back in 1943. That micro coating of zinc, once it comes off, leaves just the steel core itself. Uh, and by doing so, uh, basically gives you a really nice looking coin if you want to say to it. It takes away all of your uh, corrosion that has uh, shown up on the surface of a zinc coated 1943 coin. But it's missing something. It's missing a lot actually. And, and most people that have followed me have, have heard me talk about this and, and what to look for when you're looking for uh, steel scents. And this is by far and away, one of the easiest ways to spot this particular type of uh, reprocessing. First of all, take a look at his cheekbone, take a look up at his jawbone, take a look above his ear, take a look at his collar and his jacket. You will notice they are worn down. They are actually slightly flattened. Let me see if I can tip this up. Uh, this the easy way. Tip this up. Let's see if I can get this to... Yeah, you can see how flattened those areas are. And why is that? Simple. This was a circulated coin that was worn down in circulation uh, and it wore through the micro thin coating of zinc that was on the coin um, and wore into the steel itself. So when this particular coin had its coating removed, it's still worn down. 
it's just nice and shiny because all you're seeing is the steel that there is. Now, the other way to tell a uh, acid dipped coin from a regular nice steel coin is going to be that cartwheel. Okay, there's your cartwheel on that, right? Take a look. You get no cartwheel. The whole coin just is shiny because all you're getting is that steel. You can even see the cartwheel on the coin next to it move. And you don't get it with this one. So the other difference between the two is I want you to look really close. I'm going to try and move the light away so you guys can see this. Ah, there we go. It's showing up perfectly. Take a look over by the word liberty. You see that little bluish haze that's there? That bluish haze is chemical that is left over from the acid bath. And you tend to get that little haze on coins that have been acid dipped. And some people call it toning and say, oh, I've got a toned steel scent. But reality says if you sent this coin in, they're going to send it back as reprocessed and probably in a body bag. You can also get a really good chance to see, if I block the light a little bit, all of those worn areas. Look at the tip. Let me grab my little pointer and see if I can do this. Look at the tip right here of his jacket um, look at right next to the bow tie you can even see some wear on the top of his shoulder especially up on his head which are all the highest points of the coin um, but the other thing is the rough surface of this coin so although it's shiny it's just the steel I'm gonna flip it over we're gonna flip the other one over a chance to show you these two back to back here you're going to see exactly the same thing. See the residue left over right up by the O of one? Um, it is what it is. It's just it's residue that's been left over. See the different type of surface to the coin. That's, your, that's what the steel scent looked like or the steel planchet looked like before it was actually turned into a coin, before it had its uh, zinc coating put on. So take a look at um, the wear on the wheat stalks. Up on the tops of the wheat stalks, you can actually see how they're worn a little bit flat. Now the kernels on this one aren't uh, worn down much because it wasn't buffed like the last video I did. But let's take a look at this one here. A chance to bring my light over. See your mint luster and your cartwheel to that coin. And this one, nothing. It's dead, basically. So there you go. That's another way of processing or reprocessing a steel scent uh, and uh, how to spot it. So hopefully that helps you out. Hopefully the audio on this one is a little bit louder. So I sure hope you guys are, are learning here because these are all things that I see on eBay, unfortunately, that other sellers are um, advertising and selling uh, and probably without them even knowing it would be my guess. So it may not necessarily be their fault. They just may not be smart enough to know the difference. Uh, so there you go. Good luck. Hopefully, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. I'll be glad to try and answer what I can. Thanks. Have a great night.